the Democrats um, will turn to Jimmy Carter. Now, Jimmy Carter is a different kind of candidate. Jimmy Carter uh, uh, presents himself as an outsider to Washington. He was the governor of Georgia, and he was an outsider. I, I don't think there's anything anybody can argue that. And he presents himself as a simple, religious, honest man who wants to restore integrity to the presidency and the country as a whole. If you notice, he, uh, he, he eschews the typical campaign colors of red and blue, and he, runs, uh, he uses green as his campaign color. Today, I think we associate that with environmentalism. But I think what he was trying to say is he's not like the other politicians. He's something different. He's from outside the process. Um, here's a, a, a campaign commercial from Jimmy Carter. We need a sunshine law in Washington to open up the deliberations of executive and legislative branches of government to the public so that we can understand what decisions are made about our own lives, what went on behind those locked doors. There's no doubt in my mind that every lobbyist in Washington knows what goes on behind those locked doors when the Congress is passing a tax measure or spending our tax money. But I was governor of five million people and I didn't know, so we need a sunshine law to open up government so the people can understand it. Vote for Jimmy Carter, a leader for a change. And Carter, uh, who will be, I think, one of the, the least likely nominees in American electoral history, will barely win the 1976 presidential election over a badly wounded Republican Party who is still associated uh, with the disaster of Watergate. Carter inherited the same problems as Gerald Ford did. A tremendous distrust of the government and a struggling economy that has high inflation and high unemployment at the same time, stagflation. Carter uh, came across as self-righteous. He, he, he was so moral and so uh, preachy that it began to turn many Americans off. And he also looked inflexible. He looked like he was unwilling to deal uh, with people who didn't agree with him. He raised government spending and he cut taxes, standard uh, uh, fiscal policy measures to try to grow the economy. And unemployment went down. Uh, but unfortunately, that led to increasing inflation, uh, partially caused by a further increase in the price of oil. In between 1970 and 1980, inflation is over 20 percent. And in the summer of 1979, further unrest in the Middle East uh, raises oil prices even higher. Carter's going to go on TV, and he's going to give a speech um, that today is remembered as the Malays speech, even though he never gives that word. But he definitely conveys a sense uh, that there's something wrong, some sort of soul sickness in America. Uh, here's an excerpt from that. I was proud of hard work, strong families, close-knit communities, and our faith in God. Too many of us now tend to worship self-indulgence and consumption. Human identity is no longer defined by what one does, but by what one owns. But we've discovered that owning things and consuming things does not satisfy our longing for meaning. We've learned that piling up material goods cannot fill the emptiness of lives which have no confidence or purpose. The symptoms of this crisis of the American spirit are all around us. For the first time in the history of our country, a majority of our people believe that the next five years will be worse than the past five years. Uh, Carter's uh, popularity will actually drop dramatically after this speech um, as he's seen of a bit of a downer, uh, not having confidence in America. Carter had run on a policy, claiming that he would have a foreign policy based on human rights and not American attempts at hegemony or, or, or attempts to control uh, the world. He denounces the Soviet Union, uh, uh, not for a lot of the standard Cold War reasons, but because he claims that they're an enemy of, of human rights. He finalizes a treaty to turn over the Panama Canal back to Panama, which had been the original arrangement that we had made way back in the Teddy Roosevelt administration. And in November of 1977, he gets the leader of Egypt uh, and the leader of Israel, Anwar Sadat and Menachem Begin, uh, to meet for peace talks at Camp David here in America. Um, and, and he is able to uh, accomplish the monumental task of getting the first peace treaty between one of the Arab nations that had been resisting Israel's right to exist in the Middle East and Israel. 
And this, uh, this peace is held uh, up, up through today. He restores diplomatic relations with China, and he finalizes the SALT II talks, the Strategic Armed Limitations talks, that had begun under Ford with Brezhnev. There is a conservative backlash as Carter is frequently attacked by conservatives for negotiating with our enemies. 